Uh, welcome to the late morning session. And uh, the first speaker will be uh, Chuano Wang from Penn State University, and he's going to tell us about efficient optimal control for uh, open quantum systems. OK, so this is about efficient optimal control for open quantum systems. So you might wonder, what is an open quantum system? So I will start telling you what, what is a quantum system, or I will start with a very uh, simple model, a closed quantum system. So a system is just a, an abstraction of quantum device, which evolves on its own. In other words, if, uh, if, if you have an initial state, then after a certain time, T, it will evolve to a final state like, like this, okay? And uh, the word closed, it means there's no interaction with the environment. So the system just evolves on its own. So if, in this case, um, the, the dynamics of the system can be modeled by a differential equation called Schrodinger equation. So this H is, is Hermitian matrix, it's called Hamiltonian. And this, this evolution is also called Hamiltonian evolution. Um, this psi is the state vector, and the solution to this, uh, then to this Schrodinger equation is this. So this, if H is Hermitian, is e to the minus i h t is a unitary operator. So uh, there is a closely related problem to this optimal control problem. It's, it's called Ham the Hamiltonian simulation problem. So if you wonder what is the output state for the system, you just implement this unitary operator e to the minus i h t by designing the circuit to mimic the behavior of this uh, unitary. So, so we, we need the output of the circuit to be close to the desired state. So this is the Hamiltonian simulation problem. So um, once you can simulate Hamiltonian, then um, we, we ask how can we control this Hamiltonian to get some desired state? So this comes to the optimal control problem for closed systems. So again, this is closed system. And by controlling, um, we, Want to have some? We want to have some access to the external control field to control the dynamics of the system. For example, you can shoot a laser beam on the system, and imagine that you have a dial for the laser beam, which you can, you, you, where you can uh, adjust the power of the laser. Then uh, this this power is determined by this function u of t, this continuous function, and this mu is Hermitian operator corresponding to the ex external control field. Then. With this field, the control field, the system, the, 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 uh, the Schrodinger equation becomes time dependent. So this H is, is, for the, is corresponding to the fixed Hamiltonian. This U of T times mu is, is the um, control field. And this, the, the solution to this time dependent Hamiltonian evolution is more, slightly more complicated than just E to minus, minus I H T. So here this becomes uh, integral, and you have also have this ordering time order operator to control the order of the integral. And then uh, for the optimal control problem, we, the objective to, is to determine a control function u of t so that this objective value is maximized uh, with res respect to this, uh, this observable O. So how can you determine this control variable so that this, this maximized, this is, it, it is called the optimal control problem. And you can imagine that it is a very important problem. It has many applications and that there are a lot of classical algorithms for solving this problem. So, uh, but the classical algorithm also suffer from this, um, this uh, the exponential, ex exponential growth of the resources in, uh, in terms of the number of qubits. So we, we have quantum algorithms for solving this optimal control problem. And we define this objective function, which is this uh, expectation value, but we, we also have this regulator term. So recall that we want to maximize this, uh, this objective function. So we have this regulator term to make sure the, uh, the control function is not too large. Then uh, the technical, in technical ingredient for this optimal control algorithm is quite simple. So it's just uh, uh, the first, you, you, you need to run this forward path, which is the time-dependent Hamiltonian simulation. You can apply your favorite time-dependent Hamiltonian simulation algorithm to simulate this time-dependent Hamiltonian. Then 
the backdoor path, backward path passes to uh, you apply your favorite quantum gradient estimation algorithm to estimate the gradient of this objective function. Then once you have the gradient, you can do gradient-based classical optimization, which will optimize this uh, objective function by iterations. Okay. So this is classical, so this is the optimal control for um, closed systems. And the previous results uh, shows that this, this can be done with the query, query complexity t, t squared over epsilon cubed. Now, we know uh, how to control um, closed system. Let's talk about this open system, all right, okay? So, so this is the picture of the closed system, and you can see that there's no interaction with the environment, but if there's interaction with the environment, it's, the system is open, okay? So this, this closed system, or, or Hamiltonian evolution only exists in textbooks, but in reality, all the systems are more or less interacting with the environment. So if you believe the whole universe is a unitary process, then every subsystem is interacting with the environment. So you, it's not perfect. So, uh, so this open system is actually the correct model for, uh, for modeling this real life quantum systems. And there are many regimes for this open quantum system. So if, if this interaction is not too strong and uh, uh, the environment refreshes quickly, then this, this type of open system is called Markovian open system in the sense that this information only flows from the system to the environment, but it never flows back to the system. So this Markovian open system, open system for such systems, we have a nice generator. We, we use this master equation called link band equation to describe the dynamics of the system. So this L, script L is a super operator. It has two, it has two parts. The first is the Hamiltonian part and the, the rest is the dissipation part. So again, this H is Hermitian, but there's no restrictions for this LJs. So they, they can be any operator. And these LJs are called jump operators. And the, this is super operator, super operator maps matrices to matrices. And the open system will produce a mixed state, which is an ensemble of pure states. And this L is called the link blandian. And then the solution to the system, to this link band equation is this. So we have E to the LT. So there's no I here. So E to the LT. Um, so if L is in this form, then it's the e to the L LT is a quantum channel, which is uh, completely positive, which is preserving. So in this sense, uh, a, a, a link band equation generates a quantum channel. Okay. So, uh, so again, we wanna, in this case, we wanna control an open system. So we, we, we just, uh, again, we have this external control field, u of t times mu, uh, controlling this Hamiltonian part. So in this, in this simplified model, and this is a re realistic model, we, uh, we, we assume there's only, we're only controlling the Hamiltonian, par Hamiltonian part, and we don't, don't touch this interaction part. Now, this link blandian becomes time dependent. So here, instead of H, we have H of T, this time dependent Hamiltonian, but for the rest of the terms, for the jump terms, the dissipation part is time independent. Okay. Then uh, the final state is slightly more complicated. So the final state is this. Again, we have the integral in the, in the exponent and we also have the time order time ordering operator. And then uh, the objective, objective for the op optimal control problem is to determine the control variable so that this, uh, this, this object function is maximized. So this trace it's just uh, the generalization of expectation value in, in the sense of, in, in terms of mixed state. Okay. And we also have the regulation term to make sure the control function is not too large. So uh, there are a lot of applications for the optimal control in both closed systems and open systems. For example, you can use it to maximize the electric current in electron transport. And you can use it to implement molecular switches, and you can also use optimal control to, to design quantum devices. So you might wonder this doesn't make sense because to, to implement this 
quantum, this optimal control algorithm, you need fault tolerant quantum computers. Right? So how, how we don't we don't have fault tolerant, fault tolerant quantum computers? How can we use it to design to design quantum devices? So there is an analogy um, in classical world. So imagine, okay, so you know that there are a lot of uh, softwares that can help us to to uh, design C CPU chips, right? So we 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 have we have classical algorithms to help us design classical machines. So we can imagine that in the future, once we have fault tolerant quantum computers, we can also use fault tolerant quantum computers to help us accelerate the process of designing quantum computers. So this is a valid and appealing application for optimal control and why we studied quantum algorithm for an optimal control problem. And the technical um, overview for this optimal control problem for open systems is quite similar to this closed systems. So again, we have this forward pass, uh, which is simulating time-dependent Lin-Brand evolution instead of time-dependent Hamiltonian evolution. And then the backward pass is again to estimate the gradient of this object function. And then we use uh, this classical optimization, which is called perturbed accelerated gradient descent to optimize this um, object function by iterating uh, the two passes. So, this perturbed accelerated gradient descent. So it's different from gradient descent because the because it's um, we only have estimate estimations of the gradient. We don't have exact gradient. So it's so it's we don't have the um, exact gradient. And also um, because the 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 object function is non-convex. And for this accelerate, accelerated uh, gradient descent, we only perturb the 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 we only perturb the gradient in, in some cases. And also we, when we um, do the optimization, we explore, exploit the negative curvature uh, to jump out of the uh, sandal point. So this is, the, the, this is a different from standard gradient descent. And then let, let me talk first talk about the first pass, the, the simulating time dependent Lin-Brand evolution. So, so this, the, the, the simulation of time-dependent Lin-Brand evolution is based on this time-independent time uh, Lin-Brand evolution, sim, Lin-Brand simulation. So I'll explain this uh, time-independent case, and then I'll show how to generalize this to time-dependent case. So, so for this Lin-Brandian, we can decompose it into two parts. This L sub D is called the drift part, and L sub J is called the jump part. So this is drift, the J is, is this, so it's quite similar to Hamiltonian evolution, but you have this non-Hermitian part. And uh, this decomposition can be uh, interpreted in, in some uh, unraveling uh, stories. Then once you have this uh, decomposition, you can apply to Hamel's principle repeatedly. So the to Hamel principle is just a mathematical tool for solving differential equations. And you just, uh, so you use Duhamel's principle to treat this, the two terms differently, and you keep applying this, and then you, you uh, arrive at the scary equation. So, but let, let me uh, tell, you, tell you an intuition of the scary notation so that it's not that scary. First, you can just ignore this, this line. You can ignore the last term. So this, because it's just, uh, this is just the integration it's just, it's just, it's high, this is the higher order integra integration. It's just the, the volume of this very tiny corner of the higher dimensional cube, right? So when the dimension is, is large, so this, the, this volume is quite small. So you can just ignore this safely. And then for the second term, okay? So let's first look at the integrand. Let's look at this e to the LD. So because LD looks like this, so this e to the LD, it is a completed positive map. And this LJ, this, this composition, E to the LD com composed by this LJ, this LJ is already completely positive. So the composition is completely positive. So you can see all the integrand, if you think of the composition of, 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 the, of the other terms. So this, this entire integrand is completely positive. This, which is nice. Then you, you need to deal with this integral and uh, you can actually use, uh, another mathematical tool called the Gaussian quadrature to approximate this integral by a summation. Then, then this becomes a summation. 
now it looks familiar, right? It's just uh, uh, in this form, this in this completely positive form. So, yeah. The K, uh, sorry, the K is the, uh, K is the controls the how precise this this this. this. Uh, this this is the inequality equality because this you have this the, the this is this is the error you, you, you basically you drop the last term so when k is getting larger and larger the, the the last term is smaller and smaller so basically k can be k is some polylog term. Yes, the last term is there. You, you, you don't care about the last term. It's because it's small. When k is larger, the last term is small. Yeah. So this term is nice because we have technical tools to implement this term. For example, when you, when you are given the block encoding of each cross operator, then you know how to implement this complete positive map by using the result from previous work. Then you can use this to implement this uh, this completely positive map. Then you can simulate this uh, time dependent time independent link blend evolution. And the previous work shows that this, the, the 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 complexity for this simulation is t times polylog t over epsilon. So this is a time independent case, and we can generalize this to a time dependent case. So again, we use the decomposition. But now this drift term depends on time. Okay, so this H depends on time. And then we can use, we can still apply to Hamel's principle, but the, the, it is slightly different where uh, you have this, uh, this uh, script K square bracket something. This, this means this, this means this, 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 uh, this is the cross operator. This, this, this is the map. Where the cross operator is A. So basically, this, this means this, you, this is the quantum the completed positive map where the cross operator is this. And then again, this integrand is completely positive. But now, this V of ST is, is like, it looks like the time dependent Hamiltonian evolution, but you have this non Hermitian part of it over there. But you can still use the algorithm for time dependent, time dependent Hamiltonian evolution to implement this. Uh, this operator, whereas, for example, you can use um, the algorithms by uh, Kiefer-Rova, Scherer, Berry for uh, uh, based on the truncated Dyson series, or the algorithm by Low and Weep based on interaction picture to simulate this this map. Then um, you can then everything's still in the complete positive form. Then you can you can use previous techniques to implement this map. But uh, a technique. Uh, uh, a little bit of technical stuff to note that, that, that you can no longer use Gaussian quadrature to approximate this, this, this integral in this case, because to use Gaussian quadrature, you need to bound the higher order de derivative of the integrand. But in, in this case, in time dependent case, we don't know how to bound the higher order derivative. So, we, but we can just use this Riemann sum to approximate the integral. It's, it's slightly less efficient. And then uh, again, the time complexity the, the our query complexity is, is roughly the same with the time independent case. So it's still linear in T and the polylog in one or epsilon. Now we know how to simulate, we, we know how to implement the first pass, the, how the time dependent link brand simulation. Now let's get, get to the second pass, the estimating gradient of the cost function. So um, the goal is to determine the cost, the control variable u of t, right? But this this is a continuous uh, domain. So, but we can discretize the time into many time steps. So we can turn the problem into a finite dimensional problem. So we just need to determine the, the function value and di discretize time steps. Then we can we can approximate the function u of t. And then uh, the by the simulation algorithm, uh, we can obtain the final state, rho of t, okay? But to recall that the, the simulation algorithm, algorithm is a unitary operator. When you trace out the ancillary qubits, you have this mixed state. But if you don't trace out the ancillary qubits, you have a purification of the, of the target state. Once you have the purification, you can turn this trace, this, this trace into 
um, as an, an expected value in a larger space. So again, we have this nice form of uh, objective function. Then uh, we can use uh, the gradient estimation algorithm to estimate the gradient. The gradient estimation algorithm requires a phase oracle, which means you compute the function value in its exponent, uh, in, in the exponent of the uh, of the phase. So, the, but this phase oracle can be simulated by a probability oracle. A probability probability oracle uh, means that you compute the function in the amplitude. Okay? And and uh, further, the the probability oracle can be simulated by this simulation algorithm plus a Tandemar test circuit. So this conversion is, is, can be easily done from the simulation algorithm to the phase oracle. Then you can use your favorite uh, gradient estimation algorithm to simulate this, uh, to uh, estimate the gradient. So in this case, we use the gradient, quantum gradient estimation by Gideon, Aruna Shalam, and the WIP um, to estimate the gradient. So the result says with high probability, you can output an estimate of the gradient uh, which is precise in terms of the two norm errors and the, the, the queries complexity is T over epsilon of the, to the gradient oracle. And which means uh, the, the, the query to this uh, link blending oracle is T squared over epsilon. Okay. Um, then uh, it comes to this classical optimization. You use per perturbed accelerated gradient descent. The classical result says the number of iterations is in this number, one over epsilon to seven over four. And then uh, recall that the estimate the gradient needs this many queries. This epsilon g is, is the quality of this gradient, est as gradient estimation. Then, the total cost is like this. If you, this, uh, first, if you are satisfied with the first order stationary point, then you can choose this uh, quality of gradient estimation to be this. Then the total cost is just the t squared over epsilon to the 23 over eight, slightly less than epsilon cubed. And if you need this second order stationary point, meaning that you also need the second order of the difference to be small, uh, then you need a much better precision for the gradient estimation. So the, this, this epsilon g is much, bet, much, much better than this epsilon, and, and than the first order case. It turns out that the total cost is, is slightly larger than this first order stationary uh, case. So this is the result of this uh, optimal control algorithm for open systems. And there are open, uh, questions. The first open question is, can we get simpler algorithm for time-dependent link band evolution? So recall that for the time-independent case, we have a simple algorithm where, we, where everything can be turned into a completely positive form, and we just use Gaussian quadrature to approximate the integral. And I, I, I told you that for this time in, for the time-dependent case, we, we don't know how to you apply Gaussian quadrature. So um, you need the actual uh, steps to take care of the time ordering. If you use Gaussian quadrature, you don't need to take, take care of the time ordering. But here, uh, you need to you need to actual uh, techniques to to take, take care of the time ordering. Well, for example, you need this uh, quantum sort or compression scheme to to handle this time ordering. So this is more complicated. So we wonder if, if we can get smaller, a simpler algorithm for time dependent simulation algorithm. And then. Can we get on uh, the optimal control problem beyond the link band case? The link band, the link band evolution is corresponding to the Markovian open system. But when the interaction is, is much stronger, this is no longer Markovian. Okay. So can we, also, can we still control, get, get optimal control for this non-Markovian open systems? And the, the last uh, qu question is, can we work this out in, in, in a different cost function? So the current, the, 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 the present, uh, presented the cost function is to estimate the, um, to maximize the uh, object, object uh, the expectation, expectation value, right? But what if you just want a specific target state and then the object function can be the trace distance between your final state and the target state. Then if you can estimate the gradient of this object function, then you can uh, solve this optimal control problem. 
So I think that's all I want to say, and uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Thank you for your talk. So I'm wondering if uh, for the time dependent Limbladian case, if the Limbladian at different time commute uh, with each other, so can we still use the simpler simulation algorithm? Oh, this is a good question. I think uh, I've got the why exactly we cannot use quadrature, Gaussian quadrature. Uh, if it's commute, it's possible, but, but I have to double check. Because if commute, there's no time ordering issue. Right? Oh, well, yes. If there's no time ordering, then this, everything is simp much simpler. Yes. OK, thank yeah. you. Thanks. And if it's commute, we just use shorter, right? Yeah. Any more questions? Yes, thank you for the talk. Um, so in the time dependent uh, uh, or maybe independent even uh, evolution, so you have this integral to estimate. Yeah. But is it true that this integral is high dimensional, right? So K is large. Uh, K is large. Yes, yes, yes. Right, so but if you estimate a high dimensional integral by discretization, you incur the course of dimensionality, right? So basically you, you need to have a, a lot of points to sample, right? So the, this grid basically becomes very, very large. So isn't this a problem? Yeah, this is a good question. So actually you, you can, uh, the, the grid point, the, if you implement the circuit, it's, it's nested, the, you, can, you can use nested um, techniques to prepare the initial state of the controlling register. So this, it's, it's not a problem. It's the, only, the complexity depends on, the, depends on K. So it's, it's not the, the, you don't have a curse of the dimensionality here. Any more questions? Okay, so let's uh, thank the speaker once again. Thank you.